In this segment, we're going to very briefly talk about the second uh, uh, portion of the natural language understanding pipeline, specifically text generation. So let me remind you what an NLP pipeline looks like. We have understanding and generation. Uh, we start from a language, like a sentence. Understanding takes us to some computer representation that the computer can understand. And then if the computer wants to respond to the human, uh, it would have to go through a generation component and produce language back. Not all NLP systems have to have both of those parts. It's completely uh, reasonable to expect the system to just understand human language and then perform some actions without having to generate anything back. It is also possible for a system to just have the second part. So for example, a computer can have access to the weather data and then use uh, automatic text generation to produce weather reports. Or it can have access to stock market data and produce financial reports. So what's the definition of natural language generation? Well, it is the process of deliberately constructing some natural language text in order to meet uh, some specific communicative goal. And the communicative goal may be uh, we want to give this specific information to this user in this particular context using this much uh, space. So this definition is from uh, David McDonald, 1992. So what is NOG? Uh, one of its most important components is uh, mapping meaning to text. So this meaning is typically represented in some semantic uh, form, for example, uh, CCG or FUG, FUG, and the stages are the following. First, you have to perform something called content selection, that is determining what content you want to share with the user. Then you perform lexical choice, which is deciding what words to use, for example, whether to use a nominalization or a verb to express a certain concept. Then you have to perform something called sentence structure generation, that is performing actions like aggregation, that is collecting uh, multiple facts into one, uh, generating referring expressions, for example, pronouns. And then you also have to worry about the discourse structure. Once you know what are the individual sentences, you may want to generate some discourse connectives, for example, therefore, or consequently, or in addition, so that the text flows more smoothly. So here's an example of an NOG system. This is the FOG system, uh, designed by Goldberg et al. Uh, it has been in use for more than 20 years now. Uh, it is designed to uh, generate weather forecast reports for the Canadian Weather Service in both French and English. So its input is some, some numerical simulation data annotated by humans, for example, about fronts and expected precipitation. And then its output, which is a little bit hard to see here, and you can probably stop and zoom in to see it in more detail, is uh, an actual weather report for a specific uh, location in one of the two target languages. So one more example of a generation system is one that was developed at Columbia University in Belcor in the 90s. Its goal was to produce reports that describe different simulation options that an engineer who lays cables in a telephone system has already explored. So the input is a simulation log file and it was designed and developed by Belcor and Columbia University in the 90s. So the input is something like this. There is a specific run ID. Uh, so specific type of cable that was located in a particular uh, place at a particular date in a certain way. And then uh, all of those get collapsed into one output. So it's something like this. This saved fiber refinement includes all DLC changes in run ID, all DLC, period. Run ID fiber all demanded that plan activate fiber for CSAs 1201, 1301, and so on in second quarter of 95 period. It requested the placement of a 48 fiber cable from the CO to section 1103 and so on. So this is uh, uh, the output of the system which used uh, FOF and uh, Surge, uh, two generation systems developed at uh, Columbia in the mid 90s. So in text generation there are some important considerations. I mentioned some of them already but they all have to deal with choices. So uh, you can consider each of those as some sort of a classifier that takes multiple inputs and you have to decide which one to take. So the choices are about the content, what you want to say, uh, coherence, uh, how to make uh, the text flow coherently, the style, the media. So media refers to the fact that you can generate multimedia presentations that involve, let's say, some of the information in visual form and the rest in textual form and you have to balance the amount of information conveyed by each of those media. 
You also have to determine what syntactic structure to use, for example, whether to use a nominalization or a verb. You have to aggregate facts so that you get uh, more concise sentences. So instead of saying, for example, there is a cable in unit one and there is a cable in unit two, you may say something like there are two cables in units one and two. You also have to figure out how to generate referring expressions so that the text doesn't look completely automatically generated. And you have to worry about the lexical choice, what words are most appropriate in a given context. So this is the end of the introduction to natural language generation. Uh, we're going to continue in the next segment.